Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Lane Side Reviews on this very special tournament vlog. I'm going to go through one of the tournaments I was recently at, what I did, how I prepared, and how things went. Here we go! Alright guys, so welcome back. As always, I am Rob Johnson. I find myself down in the ballroom we lovingly call the Pro Lounge to talk about one of my latest tournament experiences. Uh, now, for those of you who are following us on Facebook, you saw that I was recently at the Ontario Players Tour at Classic Bowl in Mississauga. So, um, I'll get to how I did in the tournament in a few minutes. But what I want to do is take you guys through how I prepared, uh, what I brought with me, the decisions I made, and kind of give you uh, thoughts on how I feel I did and I'd love to hear what you guys think. So the first thing we're going to start with is preparation. Now when I found out about this tournament it was only about three days uh, beforehand and usually I like to take a little longer to get ready for a tournament. Now I want to warn you guys you can't over prepare for events I've done it myself so when you're going through your own preparation steps don't you don't have to do everything that I do this is just kind of how I get prepared. So the first thing I do is I go to my trusty lane book. Now this is something that uh, I've been working on for about the last six months. Every time I go to a, a center or every time I go to a tournament, I write down the type of lanes they have, type of machines they have, so that I know basically what kind of, of condition I'm going to be looking at. Uh, for those of you who watch some of our videos and have bold yourself, you know that uh, different lane surfaces, AMF to Brunswick, wood to synthetic, play differently. So I always keep a little chart of how to play certain lane conditions. And then different houses I go to, I write down what they've got so that when I go back to these houses, I know what I'm going to be bowling on. So in this circumstance, we're going to Classic Bowl in Mississauga, where they have Brunswick lanes, and they're going to be shooting on 43 feet of oil. So I went through my trusty book, found lane length, oil type, pattern type, and I figured out that I should be playing in and around between uh, 14 and 12 uh, when the ball comes off the oil. Now how did I get to that number? There's a handy dandy little calculation that we use a lot, uh, that a lot of the pros use. It's called the rule of 31. Now whatever lane condition you're going to be bowling on, if you minus 31 from the length of the pattern, that's about where your ball should leave the oil pattern when it gets onto the dry. So 43 feet minus 31 is 12. Next, I decided to start packing my kit. Now my kit might be a little different from everybody else's, but I'll kind of take you through what I've got. The first thing I start with is, is what I call medical devices. So we've got a uh, wrist brace, and a knee brace. You never know if something's going to happen during an event. You're going to sprain something. You're going to tweak something. I always keep a little something with me just in case. That way I can keep going. Uh, if you hurt yourself, you should always take into account how badly you're hurt before continuing. Uh, I find if I'm going to continue, I always protect myself. Same thing with, I have an elbow brace that I wear. I used to have a little bit of tendonitis in my bicep. So I keep this with me in case it flares up. A little bit of medical tape. Uh, I can put this on strained muscles or weak muscles to give me a little bit of extra strength when I'm there. And of course, a little bit of muscle cream. Um, this one here, I'm not going to say the brand on it, happens to work very well for me. If I'm starting to uh, just feel blah, my muscle gets strained or starting to, to run out of gas, I can put a little bit of it on and it kind of takes the pain away. Next thing I go into is my shoe brush. Now, I've been to lots of tournaments where people don't buy these and I'm always the guy that people asks for them. I can't stress enough to bring a shoe brush with you. If you have, especially if you have shoes that only have one surface on them and they're not interchangeable, being able to change the surface of your shoe can be the difference between you posting your shots, sliding well, or hurting yourself. So always have some kind of shoe brush with you. Next up, 
I go to my shoe bag. Now, my, in my shoe bag, I keep my shoes with booties. Um, I see so many people who go to events and just walk around in their shoes. Um, please wear booties, guys. If you get water on your, your soles, and th this should be second nature to you guys, if you get water on your soles, you're going to stick, you're going to hurt yourself. Please wear booties. The other thing I bring that's very important in my shoe bag is the interchangeable soles. Now, as you guys have seen with our other videos, we use the Dexter SST8s. Uh, simply because they have so many options of different soles that you can wear, different heels that you can get. You can get ones that are uh, hybrid, so they have multiple sliders, multiple brakes on them. It just allows you to customize yourself to the approaches of each center, because no two centers have the same approaches. Now we get into my tournament kit. In the back here, I of course have my scissors for tape. Never leave without some kind of cutting device. Insert glue, you never know what's going to fall out. And of course my switcheroo for all of my uh, switch grips that I use in all of my equipment. Next up, I've got my fitting products. So I have a couple of diff different thicknesses of cuttable tape in case I have a blister coming up or I need better feel on my fingers. My pre-cut tape, once again a couple of different thicknesses. Here I've got the skin protection and fit tape from Turbo. I've got my two favorite thicknesses, the ones I use the most that I take with me. Now I generally choose to take two thicknesses in pre-cut and two different thicknesses in rolled. Now you'll see I happen to have my turbo tape here and turbo tape here. I use this one a lot, so I keep a little extra with me. But you can see I have another roll of turbo tape right here at a different thickness. Lastly, interchangeable thumb inserts. Uh, I carry two. Most people only carry one because they have the one fit that they like. And we tell people, once you have a thumb drilled uh, with the switch grips, you'll probably never go to another one. When I'm at tournaments, I bring an extra blank thumb with me for two reasons. Uh, one, unfortunately, I have had a thumb stolen at a tournament. Uh, so if you're without a thumb, it gets very difficult to bowl. Uh, secondly is, you never know when you're going to hurt yourself or have a swelling issue or something of that nature where you're not going to fit into your regular thumb. Rather than pulling all my tape out, I had a second blank thumb drilled so that I could find my fit with that without disturbing my original fit. Uh, that way when I go back to league, when the, the swelling goes down, I can have that same fit ball to ball without having to change too much. And I use that in conjunction with my tape. Uh, my hands swell and shrink a lot, unfortunately. Um, it's just my own personal genetics. For you guys, you don't have to do that, like I said. Uh, it's just something that I do. And lastly, I bring extra inserts. You never know when something's going to happen. An insert's going to pop out. It could fall out in a machine. Uh, it's happened to me, that's why I say it. it's a very unusual thing, but I always bring extra inserts with me, you never know when you're going to rip one, lose one, what have you. So extra inserts in my bag. Alright, so next we're going to take a little break and when we come back I'm going to actually talk about how I got ready for this tournament with my ball choices. Alright guys, so on to ball choices. Now, we knew what kind of lanes we were going to be bowling on, and we knew the basic lane pattern, but I had never bowled on it before, so I decided to do a little bit of research. Now, this was the first time I had ever bowled on the WBT Tokyo pattern, and I wanted to make sure that I had the right equipment with me to do the right job. Now, for those of you who haven't been to a lot of larger events, you get a limit on how many balls you can bring with you, so you have to make sure you make the right choices for the right patterns. Now the Tokyo pattern is 43 feet and is usually attacked pretty aggressively from inside. You keep the, the angles to the pocket pretty straight and as the mid lanes start to burn up, as the oil starts to, to go away in the middle, you move in with equipment. Now what type of equipment? What I found in my research was you want something with a little bit of a lighter surface, usually a 1500 grit or more with pin up uh, on your drillings 
so that the ball could make it through the dry parts and still have some good energy down lane. So what did I choose? Well, I went with some standards for me, some of my favorite equipment. I took the brand new Mastermind Genius drilled pinup, which you guys will see a review for very shortly. I took the Diva Pearl, another new one, the Johnny Petraglia. Then I also took the original Mastermind, the Reax version 2 original, and the Brunswick Mean Streak Beatdown. Now why did I choose those three? Those were all pin down balls. Well, having never bowled on this pattern before, and never bowled in this house, I wanted to make sure that I had something I could go to if there was a problem. So how did I do? Well, I'll be honest, it was a humbling experience. Out of the gate, I threw a 140. Now, I'll take you through what happened in my 140, and then what happened in my next game that was very humbling. When I got into practice, my first few shots I threw with my original Mastermind. Pinned down, about a 1500 surface. And, well, it didn't come back. It went a long way. Even for the amount of hand that I have, it went a long way. 43 feet is a lot of oil. So I spent most of practice breaking down the lane and the oil so that I could find a little bit of hook area for myself. Now, I made a cardinal mistake. And if you watched our Facebook lately, you know that I talked about, on one of our Lesson Wednesdays, about knowing where you're bowling. Well, I made the mistake of not knowing where I was going to be bowling. See, on my, pat, on my pair, it was myself as a right-hander and a left-hander, and that's it. On the pair I was going to be moving to, two left-handers. So I spent the majority of practice breaking down that pattern so where I could create a hook point and not preparing for the oil that was there. So when I got into it, the first four frames, I went, uh, well, let's see, Greek church, washout, big washout, made a big jump to the right, went through the nose for a big four, and that game was pretty much over at that point. Um, tried to make as many spares as I could, got to 140. The next pair I moved to, of course, was the double left-hander. Well, I didn't have the luxury of breaking that pair down in practice. So when I stepped onto that pair, they were a little glassy. I am not too proud to say, or maybe I am proud to say, that I bowled a 115. Yeah, I bowled a 115. You guys can laugh it up out there. Uh, it was tough. I lost confidence in my strike shot. I lost confidence in my spare shot. Uh, I found myself in a position where I didn't know what to do. I had focused so much on breaking in the pair before me that I didn't think about what I was going to do when I got to the new pair. So I took my lumps and took my, my sh fair share of laughs. Um, it was humiliating, a little bit. Uh, a lot of humble, uh, humble pie was eaten that, that uh, game. But the most important thing is is I took to heart what Ryan Simonelli said when we were at the Pro Tour. It's not a failure if you don't win. It's not a failure if you don't bowl well. The only failure is if you stop trying, if you give up. So, I didn't. I went back and looked. I looked in my book, how I should be playing it, what choices I should be making. When I got to my next pair, there had already been some right-handers bowling on it. So there was a little bit of a bump area for me, a little bit of a hook point that I could get into. I changed balls from starting with the Mastermind and the Mastermind Genius and went into the Reax V2 original, the blue ball. Well, I had a little bit more success in that one. I ended up coming at around 200. Got a little bit of confidence back, got my strike shot back, started feeling good. Realized that, yes, while I was out of, out of the hunt for the cut, there was still a lot of sweepers to, to be won. They still make my money back. And that's what I started to do. The next day, game I came out, threw a good mid-200, won myself a sweeper. Last game went out, threw a 224, won a sweeper. So I made my money back. So what did I learn from this event? Well, I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, that 140 I threw the very first game, well, when I was getting down on myself, I forgot to look around at everybody else. With the exception of two or three guys, most of the scores were in the 150s to 160s. Everyone was struggling on that shot. So I shouldn't have gotten so hard on myself, and I shouldn't have spent so much time trying to beat the pattern rather than playing it. 
That 115? Yeah, we already went through that. I got myself a big old plate of humble pie. But I didn't give up. And I kept bowling. And I kept going back to my basics. What, I've, what I know, what I've learned, and what I could see by watching other bowlers. The rest of the time, I shot 200 plus. I got to my average and a little bit more, made myself some money, and had a good tournament experience. So for you guys who are going out there for tournaments, take some time to prepare. You don't have to go into the detail that I go into, but make sure that you have a properly packed kit. Know a little bit about the lanes. Know a little bit about the pattern. Use the internet. It's there for you guys to learn from. All those tubes are full of knowledge, so why don't you log on and learn something. Lastly, I want to thank you guys for supporting me. As I posted on there, I got quite a few notes from people who were cheering me on, asking me how I was doing and such. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. Myself and Scoops, who isn't here right now, uh, we wouldn't be out here trying to make our march to the PBA. We wouldn't be out here bowling in these events. You guys give us the confidence to keep going, and we hope that we're giving you guys the knowledge back to make you guys better bowlers. So until next time, guys, hopefully on the next vlog, and definitely on the next set of reviews, we'll see you late side. This program is sponsored by Turbo, driven to bowl. For all the quad two inserts and interchangeable thumb assemblies we use in our videos, the Rose on Bowling Store for all of our pro shop needs, Dexter Bowling Shoes for the SST8s, and Bowlerama Berry for the lanes that we film on.